Hello, good morning. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Louise and this is Louise's Lifestyle. Thank you for joining me. Today we're looking at how to keep my beetle leaf plants in a healthy condition over the winter period. Um, we're still in winter. It's February the 18th today. So we've got a, another couple of months before we see the warmer weather and longer day lengths. So this is um, my Bangla pan. This is a plant I got back in 2020 to replace the original plant. My original plant, Bangla Pan, uh, was from 2012 to 2020. So I had that eight years. And I have done several videos uh, about that. Well, not several, I think I did a couple of what it used to look like. So this is um, a two-year-old plant. And this is a one-year-old plant. So this is the plant that I got from Bangladesh. This is Cassia Pan. Um, another variety of beetle leaf, Piper beetle, um, I brought back in 2022. And so um, how am I keeping these alive uh, over the winter period? Um, as I mentioned before, I've been growing beetle leaf for many years and I've learned quite a bit over the years of what they like and what they don't like. And finally, I think I sort of got the right kind of uh, potting mix and position that they prefer to be in um, through lots of trial and tribulation. So let me start off with uh, the position that they're in. So this uh, this window here faces southeast. It's a little bit sort of a mixed day today, it's sort of sunny one minute and then it's cloudy the next. Um, but when it is sunny, you can see that you get, they get plenty of sun. Now, contrary to what some people think, um, people who grow it in South Asia would say you need to have them in a more shady position because they get sun scorched. And that might be true for where they're growing in their environment. However, we don't have a tropical environment here in the UK and the sun that we get is very limited. So there's no sort of um, risk as far as um, getting you know, sort of scorched by the sun, unless you put these outside on a very hot sunny day without hardening them off. Um, these don't wouldn't naturally grow in the UK anyway, but if you were to put it outside in the spring uh, to give it a bit of fresh air, don't just put it in a very strong sunny uh, area, uh, more of a, a shady position. So yes, in, a, in its natural environment, it doesn't like uh, strong sun, but in an artificial environment, like say what we've got here in the living room, then give it plenty of light. So I wouldn't put this in a shady corner. So position wise, uh, southeast facing next to a window. Um, compost, what kind of compost um, am I using? Well, previously I've tried perlite mixed with citrus compost, um, slightly acidic, and they seem to be fine, but eventually over time, they do develop root rot. The roots are very uh, susceptible to rot. It's because there's too much moisture in the soil and the plant can't tolerate it. They just don't tolerate being in very wet conditions. And the mixtures that I've used in the past have caused the plant to develop a browning of the leaves, leaf drop, etc. So and I would have to keep cutting it back and cleaning the roots and changing the medium. So eventually I've come to this um, orchid bark and I found that this seems to be the best for my plants anyway. You know, I know more people are growing beetle leaf now in the UK than in previous years when I first started. There was, I don't think anybody was. So I couldn't really compare other people's growing conditions. But I have found that this orchid bark seems to be the best for them. Um, what I do is once a week, water, two or three litres of water, go through this pot 
and floods out and what remains is like a damp you know you won't see any water running off from here but the soil is or the mixture is damp and it's enough to keep this plant from wilting and you know the leaves turning uh, brown and falling off same with the cassia pan i've got it in the orchid bark mix and flush the water through once a week and it's uh, it's got nice healthy growth if you see the leaves are wilting in between watering then check the soil further put your finger in the soil to to uh, about a two inch depth and if it's dry then water it um, so over watering is uh, the enemy of this plant it doesn't like too much water right regarding fertilizer I don't fertilize these plants I used to try with miracle grow and it would sort of stimulate the plant into putting out new leaves but um, it would lead to a build-up of too much salt so um, these fertilizers can contain these salts these nitrates and they stay in the soil they don't get flushed out and eventually you get too much of it in the soil and the leaves start turning brown and you think oh it's got root rot and you check the roots are fine it's not the it's it's the roots have been um don't tolerate a high salt um build up in the soil so don't use fertilizer i don't use it. it they seem to be fine without it um maybe if you do want to fertilize use the granules rather than a liquid fertilizer like miracle grow or maybe a slight um top dressing of uh, vermicompost um, which is a bit more organic, you know, a bit more natural. But don't um, use too much of the Miracle Grow or Baby Bio or anything like that. You will get artificially pumped up leaves, but they won't stay. You will you'll end up poisoning the soil. Right, so we've gone over the light conditions, the um, medium that they're growing in, and the watering as well. You know, once a week for me in this... Um, orchid mix is sufficient for them uh, pests now they do have pests um, in the indoor growing um, plants you will get things like spider mite you will get um, scale insect but on these these tend to not have the spider mite it's more um, aphids so a green fly or little brown aphids that suck the um, sap off the leaves. I'll show you a, an example of one of the leaves that was attacked by aphids. You can see all that patchy, patchiness there. You can actually see there's a, an aphid on there, on the, on the top of the leaf actually. There it is, I'll show you. So we'll just get rid of that squish it basically so I don't use any sprays on these chemical sprays I do use on my other plants but the leaves are very very thin and delicate they don't like being sprayed if you spray them you will notice probably a few days later you get this brown crisping of the leaves and the leaf drops off so that's not the aim of this uh, you know prevention you don't want to end up killing the plant because you've try to get rid of aphids by using chemical sprays so this is what happens uh, the leaves start to go brown and curl under so that's a sign that you've got pests on your plant so regularly check the underside of the leaves and what I do is I just get them under the shower or under the tap and blast them off with the water nothing else no neem oil no no nothing like that at all so um yeah this is what I do to keep them alive and they are still actively growing um, there's a new leaf there unfortunately it's been attacked by uh, pests so it's gone a little bit crinkly so if we can focus on that leaf there it's a little bit crinkled because a it's new and b it's been attacked by aphids so this is what happens well this is a brand new leaf as well so still growing during the winter months and uh, some people 
Um, I've noticed in America, as people who are growing them there, if they've got theirs in um, an outdoor environment, they actually cut theirs down to the bottom and let it regrow. But it's not essential to do that, you know. If the plant's actively got leaves on it, why why cut it down to the bottom? I'd only do that if it had lost all its leaves and perhaps that was the only way of uh, restarting the growth. But uh, it's not essential to do that. So there it is. My Well, these are two of my uh, Piper Beetle. Um, I've got cutting somewhere and I've got another variety, a couple of varieties of beetle leaf dotted about the house. But uh, if you are growing um, beetle leaf in the UK, um, I'm not selling cuttings at the moment, although I have got one cutting reserved for someone. This plant needs to grow a little bit bigger before I can start taking cuttings. Um, it's not got enough growth points so i mean individual stems like this so it needs to have a few more of those before i can start taking cuttings and you take your cuttings off the growing tip um you know about this height so i don't want to start doing that just yet um so no cuttings available at the moment maybe later on in the year propagate them by uh, starting them off in water I'll show you one that I've propagated. Just bear with me a sec. So this one's been propagated in perlite. You see the roots there. And um, it's got a little bit of leaf scorch. And that's because it was under a grow light. So yes, so that's another thing I should mention. They don't like direct grow lights over them. Uh, the leaves are, as I say, quite delicate and they burn. And that's what's happened here. This was in a fish tank. And the light above in the fish tank where I sort of convert it into terrarium scorched these leaves so I've now taken it out of that environment and it's about three feet from the window and the newest leaves that one got damaged I think I was um, moving it somewhere and it caught on something but the new leaves haven't got any of that kind of damage on them and the perlite is a good medium to start cuttings off in uh, and then you can transfer them into whatever compost uh, you decide to grow them on into. So that's it of today, folks. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.